now that you've gone through clip one and you've learned those two G major scales, open position and second position, uh, let's take a look at some ways of tying those two shapes together. If you can move through the different scale patterns up and down the fretboard, you can increase your ways of um, phrasing and ways of stringing notes together or stringing you know, multiple notes for harmony together. Uh, and really just increasing your playing, increasing your vocabulary. Here are a couple of examples of how you might string those two scales together. These first two measures um, st string the, two, the lower octave. It starts on this G and ends on this G on the, the low E string. Uh, but instead of just going up through the scale, we're actually sliding up into second position and then coming back down again. And same thing with uh, the upper octave and these two measures. Start on open G here, and instead of just staying in open position, we're sliding up into second position, so up to the fifth fret here, and then working our way back down a little differently. These are just two examples. There's you know numerous ways that you could slide from one point to another point or move from one point to another point. Um, and you want to play around with with being as comfortable. You'd, I would recommend practicing moving from one position to the other on each string, uh, and moving, working your way through the scales that way. So if you were to get to this, say this uh, uh, this C note right here, instead of going to D here, you could slide up to the fifth fret D, and so on, and work your way through that way. So these are just a couple options. Down here is. Uh, Similar thing, we start on this low G and we work our way up to the, the high G, so we're going two octaves here, and then we work our way back down through a different path. Uh, we're going to play these together here in a few minutes, but uh, this is the tab for it, so feel free to pause it and play through it on your own. Um, and then we'll look at fingering and sliding and that type of thing as well. Now that you've taken a look at the tab, uh, let's look at some different options for how to, to, to play these. We, you can choose different fingerings and you can choose different techniques to change positions like sliding or doing a pull off um, to open you up to get back somewhere else. Um, so let's, let's take a look at these. Here's a exercise number one. I'm going to just play it straight first. There's one option. That's only up. I, I chose to just wait until that last minute and play both notes with my pinky. And now I'm in second position. Another option would be to, uh, to switch once we get to this E note. I didn't switch until I landed back on the G and put me back in open position. Now that time, I came down and I switched on C. So I used that open D string to allow me to, to move. Now I'm back in open position. So there's different ways, and, and keep in mind that depending on what you're doing at the time, you want to figure out the most efficient way, or you know what's the most logical way at that point. Uh, it's not one right way. It's a matter of how does it work best in the song you're playing, or in the, the lead break you're taking, or whatever it is. Um, so explore it, figure it out. If it feels awkward, it may very well just be it, not the way to do it. So play around with multiple options. Uh, let's look at number two now in this upper octave. So that time I did this this pinky move. So I slid. And that put me in the second position. But I could also have just started there because I had that open string. So I could make my decision at that point to just go ahead and be there. You know, either way it would work. It just depends on where you're coming from or where you're going. Uh, so on the way back down, I'm going to slide down at this point from, from D to C.
So it's almost more of a reach than a slide, but you're changing positions between those two. If you did want to slide, you could do something like that. It's a little tricky. Um, I switched fingers and during my slide. And uh, it's tough to get enough volume out of it, but it's, you know, something worth doing. So that's an option too, is switching during the slide. You have to play around with that a little bit. If you approach the scales from thinking of each string has a new set of options and you want to figure out what your options are on those strings, then you open up your pathways more and more and more. Uh, try, try to, we are developing habits here and you want to develop good habits and the habit would be getting from point A to point B. Um, the, the downside is if you don't develop enough of those habits, you start to sound uh, repetitive or monotonous. Um, you know, don't you don't want to every time you come from from open to second, you don't want to find yourself, you know, doing that every time you have to get there. Even though that's a great way to get there, you don't want it to be your only way, your only path. So as many paths as you can get, the better vocabulary, the more vocabulary you'll have. I'll play number three once, and then we'll see what we can come up with. So for the most part, I stayed up in second position there. On the way back down, I slid, I slid down into first. Uh, like, and then at that open string point, I moved it back here into second. Let me try it again. With uh, This time I'm going to play more out of open position and, and do a little bit more sliding up into second and, and then sliding back and forth. So let's see how that works. There's just a couple options there out of the whole bunch that you could have. So sliding in between the two, um, utilize the open string. So when you have an option for an open string, it frees up your hand to, to move cleanly. Um, do a pull off, you know, to get to that open string, and so it gets you out of the way quicker. Just a whole bunch of them out there. So these are just a few ways to look at it. <laughs> 